Shavua Tov, Agut Avoch, and welcome to our program. Shabbos morning, we read the Pasha of Tudumo, and Shabbos to Mincha, we started the Pasha of Ve'ato Tetzave. Ve'ato Tetzave, Rabbi Soy, is a very sensitive week in the history of Chabad Hasidim. We all remember the Kuntres, the Ato Tetzave, that the Rebbe distributed with his own hand on Purim Koton, Tovshin Nun Beis, 1992. Uh, Purim Koton, Tovshin Nun Beis, was the same on the schedule, on the Hebrew schedule, as it is this year. It was on a, on a Tuesday. On Monday, the Rebbe asked that this kuntres should be printed, and it was. Nevertheless, on Tuesday, the Rebbe went after Tuesday, Purim Koton, Tovshin Nun Beis, the Rebbe went to the Ehel, and after Shachar, the Rebbe went after Shacharis, after the prayer in the morning, and before he left to the Ehel, he asked Rabbi Groner that they should print many more pamphlets like this, because when the Rebbe will come back from the Ohel tonight, he will distribute this kuntras. Not only that, uh, upon the Rebbe's instructions, in, in this plastic, what you had is uh, the kuntras, as you can see, also two dollars in each and every single kuntras. Moreover, in every kuntras was also a small piece of lekach, of honey cake, that you give on Erev and Kippur or Shain the Rabbe. And when the Rabbe came back from the Ehel, the Davant Mincha and Mayriv, and after Mayriv, the Rabbe spoke for 12 minutes, and after that, the Rabbe uh, gave out this Kuntras. The Rebbe gave out 8,000 copies of this Kuntras because during the day, uh, all of Chabad, all of Lubavitch was a buzz. The Rebbe is giving out a Kuntras tonight. And therefore, people from all over, from all around New York, knew that tonight is a special night. Uh, to my life, the shul was full. And the Rebbe gave out 8,000 of these Kuntrasim. The Rebbe stood for five hours giving out these Kuntresim and the Maimed of Pudim Koton Tovshin Nun Beis, the Maimed of Veato Tetzave. Now, it is not for us to try and guess as to what happened here. But maybe the Rebbe saw that come Pudim, when Pudim there is a mitzvah of Lech Kinesis Kol HaYehudim to gather all Jews, that year Tovshin Nun Beis, Purim, the Rebbe saw that he will not be in the condition to be able to hold the Fabrengen and to say Lechayim with Chassidim and so on. So therefore, 30 days before that, Purim Koton, Tovshin Nun Beis, and we can do the calculation of uh, Purim Koton, Tovshin Nun Beis, Purim is Yudalet, um, and then we have, we know what happened on Chov Zayin Odorishin, which is 13 days later. So 13 days before Chov Zayin Odor, Tovshin Nun Beis. And the Rebbe knew exactly what is going to happen. So the Rebbe did the Knesset Kol HaYehudim. And the Rebbe stood for five hours, and the Rebbe gave out this kuntres, this kuntres put him cotton, the kuntres that had the pamphlet, that uh, the plastic that had the pamphlet, and that had two dollars for tzedakah, and that had a piece of honey cake. As a matter of fact, I must tell you, like many others, the honey cake made everybody think. Me think, what's this? What's what's the honey cake? We get honey cake on 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 Edivim Kippur. But the Rebbe already gave us the honey cake for Erev Yim Kippur. And as it says in Zehar, Purim is Yim Kippur, like Purim. So already the Rebbe gave us the honey cake for Erev Yim Kippur because the Rebbe saw that Erev Yim Kippur, he will not be able physically to give out honey cake. So the Rebbe already 
gave out the honey cake before. Now, when this happened, no one knew exactly what was happening. The Rebbe is giving other kuntas. No one was thinking that this is the last kuntas for a long time. No one was thinking that. No one knew that. The Rebbe is giving out so many kuntas. So the Rebbe is giving out another kuntas. Although you can't say on what the Rebbe is giving out there, it's another kuntas. But the Rebbe is giving out a kuntas. Like he gave out so many other times. This is what Hasidim were thinking. But the Rebbe knew that this is the Kuntalis. This is the Kuntalis for a long time. And it's difficult for us to know uh, what everybody was thinking. And especially difficult to, for us to know what the Rebbe was thinking. But let's think for a moment. What was the Rebbe thinking when he was giving out the Kuntalis to each person? The Rebbe was looking at each person. And the Rebbe knew that soon will be a time when we will not be able to see him. He will be able to see us in his own way, but we will not be able to see him. And he's giving us a kuntalis that for the little while, albeit too long, that we're going to be separated, that we will not be able to see him, there is a kuntalis for us to study. So in this Kuntalis, there is a lot for us. There's a lot that tells us about where we are and what we should look forward to. This is the Kuntalis of Pudim Kotun. As we always tell a, a story. So we are going to continue with Pudim Kotun Tovshinun Beis. But first, our customary story that also has to do with that time. I remember one evening I was sitting in the office. I wrote a, 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 book, a report of Mate Mashiach. And then the report came back. And at the end of the, re and, and at the, end of what the Rebbe answered on the report, before that, I should say, the Rebbe put four words, Shiro Vezimro Shishimim. This is the beginning of other Tovshinun Beis. Shiro Vezimro Shishimim. Shiro means singing by mouth. Zimro means singing through, through a musical instrument. Shishimim for 60 days. And we understood what the Rebbe's meant, that there are 60 days in order, and we should use those 60 days for singing and dancing. And indeed, we started, the Rebbe answered it once, the Rebbe answered it again. On Shabbos, following on Shabbos, the Rebbe spoke about the concept of botel b'shishim. Botel b'shishim is a halachi concept, which means that it is an old in 60. If there is 60 times kosher against this one little part that may be not kosher, and it's all in the same pot, then it's an old, because there are 60 times of much of kosher against it in the same pot. And the Rebbe explained what does it mean in this case. Botel b'shishim, that all the negative things that could happen should be an old by the 60 days of the two others, the two others of 60 days. And this is why the Rebbe said, the Rebbe looked straight at what's going to happen. And he saw of Zion or the Rishin. And the Rebbe wanted to unroll it. That it should be bottle. It should not exist. It shouldn't work. And this is why the Rebbe said it should be bottle b'shishim. In retrospect, those are heart-shaking words. Mountain-shaking words. Botil Bashishim, that all the negative things of other, including Chov, Zion, Oda, Rishin, Tovshin, Nun, Beis, the day when what happened happened, should be Botil, it shouldn't happen. Bashishim in the 60 days of the two others. And the Rebbe stood for five hours, giving each person a Kuntalis, and giving each person a Beloche. 
Let's open up the Kuntalis and let's see what, the, what what's in the Kuntalis. Um, this is the Kuntalis, Pulim Koton, Tovshin, and Beis, and there is a Maimel. And the Maimel has to do with our publisher. The Maimel starts, Ve'ato Tetzave, and you should command. Ve'ato Tetzave is B'nei Yisroel, Ve'yikhu ilecho shemen za'izoch kos islamoel, l'hal is nil tomit. Which means, and you should command the Jewish people, and they should bring to you shemen za'izoch pure olive oil, Cause he's beaten Lamoil to light, Lahale is Neil Tommy to bring up a, 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 a steady or a permanent light. And the Rebbe says after that that there are four questions. And what are the questions? One, two, three, four. What is the f- the first question is, and if you want to remember how many questions, think of the four questions of Pesach. So you have four questions on Pesach, and you have four questions on Purim Koton. And what is the question? The first question is, Every place in Chumash, we can open up, and we can see it in Chumash in many, many places, where Almighty God says to Mesha Rabbeinu, that you should command the, the Jewish people. What does it say? Why double Hashem? Before that, it says why double Hashem? El Meisha Leimet. Meisha Almighty God speaks to Meisha, and He tells to Meisha, "Command the Jewish people." So the commandment comes from God. Here it does not say Tzavas Bnei Yisrael, command the Jewish people, and it doesn't say double Bnei Yisrael or speak to the Jewish people. Here it says directly, "The Ato Tzavas Bnei Yisrael." You should command the Jewish people. And the Rebbe adds, and the Rebbe says, that the Atto Tetzave is not only a departure, a, linguist, a linguistic uh, departure only in the language. So it's not just linguistic. It's a, it's a in, 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 in essence, it's a greater departure than only linguistically. Why? Because it's a departure in essence. What is the departure in essence? That the Atatasava means that Mesha is going to command them. Now, one is going to ask, Mesha is the one who, who is commanding? Doesn't the commandment come from Almighty God Himself? Mesha is only the Shaliach to bring to us the commandment of Almighty God. So, what is the Atatasava that you should command? That is the question. The other question is, it says, They should bring to you. What should they bring to you? The oil. Now, the obvious question is, what is Mishra Rabbeinu going to do with the oil? Mishra Rabbeinu is not lighting the menorah. The menorah is being lighted by Aharin. So technically, they should bring it to Aharin, not to Mishra, because Mishra did not use the oil. Aharin used the oil. So why does it say, to you. And then the third question is Kosis Lamoil. Kosis means beaten. Lamoil we translate to light. But basically, Lamoil does not mean to light. Lamoil means to the essence of light. And there's so much in Chsidis that's written that there's a difference between Eil and Moil. Eil is light. And moil is the essence of light. As a matter of fact, it says in the of Chesidus that moil, the essence, doesn't light. It's the extension that lights. So therefore, it should have said, arguably, kosis lehoil. That would be the digduk of the Hebrew language. Kosis beaten, lehoil, to light. But it does not say kosis lehoil. It says kosis lamoil. Beaten, lamoir, for the essence of light. And this is a, almost like a contradiction in terms. The essence of light doesn't light. So we have to understand, what does kosis lamoir mean? This is the third question. The fourth question is, the fifth akasha is, uh, in, in the last postage it says, me'edavad baker. 
the Kanema Lahale is Neil Tomid. Next Pasuk it says that you light the Menele Mead of Albeke from the night to the morning. And here it says Neil Tomid. Neil Tomid means a steady light. Is it from night to morning or is it steady? Is it steady or is it from night to morning? So these are the four questions. And the Rebbe answers, And my saintly father-in-law, says the Rebbe, explains, and then in parentheses the Rebbe says, where does the Rebbe, previous Rebbe explain this? And his known Maimel, that starts with the words, that was said, 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 that in said, that was said, that the Rebbe that was that was said, that was said, that was said, that the previous Rebbe said, in Moscow in 1927 on Pudim Koton, the Rebbe calls it that in his known said, What does said, mean? Previous Rebbe said, that was said, that so known about this said, as different than from any other, than any other Maimel. And the answer to that is, the pre- previous Rebbe in 1927 did not live in Moscow. He lived in Leningrad, now called Petersburg. But he came to Moscow, the beginning of the first order. And the Rebbe was planning on, planning on saying a Maimel, on Pulim Koton in Moscow. And there was a Jew by the name of Aleph Fuchs. And he was the chairman of the Jewish community, the Oshakol of the Jewish community in Moscow at the time. And he was summoned to the Gepau. The Gepau, that is the Soviet oh, intelligence agency. Oh, it's equivalent to the to the to the FBI, and when you heard the Gepo U, the Dalai sometimes you would say everybody would get scared, and they summoned him for a meeting with them. And generally, when somebody was summoned for a meeting with them, he would call his children, his wife and children, and he would say, "He has to go to the meeting." He doesn't know if he will ever see them again. So he wants to tell them they should be strong. They should know who they are. They shouldn't forget where they came from. Folks did the same thing. They called him to the meeting and they asked him that they know that the Rebbe is here from, from, from Leningrad. And they know they said that he's here to to make to raise money for his activities. He is here to encourage the youth to follow the Jewish way of life. And they know they said about the Rebbe Schneerson that he has hundreds and thousands of followers all over Russia, and that included in his followers are those who are Hasidim and those who are Misnagdim are also listening to him. And they want to know exactly when he came, exactly what he is doing, and when he is leaving. Needless to say, Fuchs was a smart man, and he said, I know the Rebbe Schneerson. I even knew his father. But I can tell you, if he's here, he doesn't do anything that's against the law. Exactly what he is doing, I must tell you, I don't know. I don't know when he came, how long he's going to stay, what he does, that I don't know. With miracles, they let him go. He didn't go home that night. He went and he found a way to give the Rebbe the message in his name, that in his opinion, if they have called him to find out what the Rebbe is doing in Moscow, that is not a good sign, in his opinion. And therefore, his opinion is that the Rebbe should leave Moscow tonight. Not tomorrow morning. Not tomorrow morning. We don't take any chances with them, Fuchs figured. Tonight. The message was delivered to the Rebbe. And the Rebbe said, I am not leaving. I'm going to leave whenever I want to leave. 
And not only that, the Rebbe said that he's going to say a maimel, a public maimel, on Pulim Koton, in the Chabad Shul. Fuchs writes that he knew about it, so he went to the maimel. He came, and what he saw, that the shul was open, the shul was full. Uh, you couldn't get another person into the shul. Not only that, the people were sitting on the steps from all sides. The windows were open to listen to the Rebbe. In the middle of the shul, on the beam, the Rebbe was sitting. And the Rebbe was saying a maimon in a very, very hard, loud voice. You were able to hear the Rebbe's voice outside. And what was the Rebbe saying? There's a lesson that we learned from Mordechai. Mordechai didn't, didn't knee and he didn't bow. And that everybody should know what his, what his Jewish obligations are. And he should continue and he should copy Mordechai at Tzadik. And he should do the right thing and so on. No. This is Moscow. This is 1927. When there is a decree that no one, that no Jew should practice his religion, stands a Jew with Mr. Snefesh, and he knew they were there. He knew they were there. They, and, and, and the Rebbe said he saw them. Their agents were there among, among the people. As a matter of fact, Fuchs writes that he came there with a friend. He stayed for a little while. He looked around. He saw all the faces, all the agents that were planted all over the shul. And he left immediately. He was afraid to stay there. But the Rebbe was not afraid. The Rebbe delivered this message loudly and clearly. You do not bow. You do not, uh, you do not knee and you do not bow. And you practice your Yiddishkeit openly, clearly. And not only, not, not, not only uh, did they hear what the Rebbe said, and all the agents were there, they figured out that this is, that the Rebbe has a plan for the future. And this precipitated the Rebbe's arrest. You can do the calculation. The Rebbe was arrested four months later to the day. What do you mean to the day? This was Yudalad Odalishin. Four months later, Yudalad Odorishin, Yudalad Odorshini, Yudalad Nisan, Yudalad Dia, Yudalad Sivan. The Rebbe was arrested the night of Tesvov Sivan. Four months and a day later, exactly. Because this is what took them over the top. If the Rebbe can come to Moscow and in front of a full shul of Jews, knowing that they are there, he can speak that, more, that, that you do not bow to them, you do not need to them. You do what a Jew is supposed to do, independent of what they think. That made their decision, that they have to do something drastic about the Rebbe Schneerson. And indeed, this is what happened um, four months later. But after that, it was like, who do I say of a simch of a sosin we call Jews like Purim? Because of Yud Bistamus. So when the Rebbe writes here, Bema'amole Hayodua, the known Maimel, indeed it was known, because it was a Maimel with Mr. Snefesh, the Kibbel in Moscow in 1927 that precipitated the Rebbe's arrest four months and one day later. So in that Maimel that says like this, Atsivu Yehutzavsov Echibul. Now we have a question. What does the Ato Tetzave mean? Because uh, every place it says, by David Hashem Lame Shalem, it's Almighty God who is commanding. The answer is that Tetzave also has another meaning. Tetzave means Tzav Sov unity and connection. Who is going to unite and connect the Jewish people with Almighty God? Who is that going to be? That is Mesha. Shemesha, who Mekasha, who Mechabed has been Israel, made himself. That Mesha Rabbeinu, he is the one who connects and unites the Jewish people with Almighty God. This is why our first, we have our first edits. Ve'ato Tetzave, you are going to be the one who is going to make that connection between the Jewish people and Almighty God. And then, moreover, Ve'al Yidei Shemesha Mashpi Ali 
through the fact that Meshe Rabbeinu is doing this great activity. And he is uniting and connecting the Jewish people with Almighty God through this. Through this, there is, there is an addition and an advantage to Meshe Rabbeinu. In other words, if Meshe Rabbeinu does that, not only will he accomplish that he will connect and unite the Jewish people with Almighty God, there will also be an additional uh, benefit to Meshe Rabbeinu that he will derive a great benefit, a, a, a great elevation through that. And there will be an elevation in Meshe. So therefore, now we can understand why it says, they should take for you. In other words, the beneficiary here is not only Aaron, your brother, because he's going to get the oil. You are going to be the beneficiary as well. You are, get, you are going to get an elevation and a promotion, whatever, whatever you call it. You are going to get a, 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 a great benefit from the fact that you are connected to Jewish people. So now we have two questions that are answered. Through the fact that Meshe Rabbeinu Yitzave V'yikashir as Ben Yisraeli Meir himself, through the fact that Meshe Rabbeinu will connect and unite the Jewish people and bind the Jewish people with Almighty God, they are going to bring this oil Eilecho to you, that the Jewish people are going to add an additional light to Meshe Rabbeinu. So we have two questions answered. And to explain to this, he says in the Maimel, that Meshe Rabbeinu Nikro Rayo Meshe Rabbeinu is called the faithful shepherd. Um, what does the faithful shepherd mean? So there are two explanations. One is, He's the faithful shepherd of the Jewish people. He is the one who shepherds the Jewish people under all conditions. And the second explanation is, that Meshe Rabbeinu is the one who feeds the Muno. He is the faithful feeder, that he feeds the Jewish people the Muno. So we have two explanations as to, as to what Rayamehemne means. Now, one is going to ask a question. Meshe Rabbeinu has to feed the Jewish people the Muno? Don't the Jewish people have the Amunu? Because it's part of their being, it's part of their of their of their being born. As as a matter of fact, the language is Ma'aminim Bene Ma'aminim. They are believers, the children of believers. And if they are the children of believers, the children of Avraham Avinu, so why does Mesha Rabbeinu have to feed them Amunu? And the answer here is that Meshe Rabbeinu makes sure that the Emunu is Bipnimius, that it goes in inwardly. Yes, we have Emunu, but the Emunu is outwardly. It does not really have an effect on the deeds of the individual. There is, there is a Gemola. Ganvo apu machtalto lachmonokalia. That the Ganif, when he's about to open up a safe, he asks Almighty God, God, Almighty, help me that I should be successful. When, I, when he's robbing the bank, he's asking God, help me that I should be able to get into the safe and out of the safe before the police come. Where does that say? Generally, the, the reference to that is to En Yankiv Seif Belochus. To the En Yankiv at the end of the Belochus, of, of Mesich the Belochus. What does that mean? If we look at the end of Mesich the Belochus, we're not going to find it. But in the version that the Mechabel of Enyankiv had, he had it at the end, so he put it in. So therefore, the Malim Mokim, the reference to that is Enyankiv Seif Belochus. And what does it say? That the Ganef, as mentioned before, is asking Almighty God for help, so he should be able to get into the bank, Get into the safe, take out the money, put the money in his pocket, get out of the bank on time, get into the car, get away before the police comes. Now, that itself is very questionable. The Ganef is calling God to help him. To help him in what? 
to help him in, in, in doing something that God doesn't want him to do. So this is a, there's a contradiction here. If he believes in God, then why are you doing something against God? If you're asking God to help you, then do something that God wants you to do. So here it is a contradiction. And the answer to that is that the reason that that can possibly happen is that the, the God of has a mono. Because if he wouldn't have a mono, he wouldn't say, Almighty God, help me to, to break into the safe. So he does have a mono. However, the Yamuno does not permeate his being. It doesn't permeate his deeds. It's superficial. It's not inwardly, it's outwardly. However, what we want, that Meshach Rabbeinu should feed the Yamuno, feed the Yamuno should go in in an inwardly fashion. And then, and then the Rebbe adds that this is not only a reference to Meshach Rabbeinu, it is also a reference to all the followers of Meshach Rabbeinu. It's a reference, says the Zehal, to all the Meshach Rabbeinus in every generation. And it even says specifically that in the time of the Gzele of Achashverish, there was a Meshach Rabbeinu. His name is Mordechai. Was Mordechai as great as Meisha Rabbeinu? That is not the issue. He was the Meisha Rabbeinu of that generation. Mordechai Bedele was like Meisha Rabbeinu in his day. So therefore, these Roshi Alpha Yisroel, the leaders of the Jewish community in every in every generation, and in every generation there is Ispashtu the Meisha. There is a leader that has the extension of Meisha Rabbeinu. He is the one who makes sure that the emunah of the Jewish people should be inwardly. This is, this is the answer. This is the answer to that question. Now we still have a question. We have a question. What does Kosis Lamoil? We have an answer to what it says. To the first, we have an answer to the first question. The Ato Tetzavet that Meishal Rabbeinu is making the connection. We have an, an answer to the question, that she came to you because there's a benefit and an advantage to Meshach Rabbeinu when he connects and unites the Jewish people with Almighty God. But then we have the question, Kosis Lamoil. Kosis Lamoil means, Kosis means beaten, Lamoil to light. And we've asked the question that I should have, I should have said, arguably, Kosis Lehoil, beaten to light, because that is air that produces light. However, moil means the essence of light. The essence of light does not light. So that is our question. And the Rebbe answers that kosis la moil means that a Jew is beaten. He's in the condition that he is beaten. Why is he beaten? Because he lives in the time of Gezele. He lives in a difficult time. He lives in our time. And there's so much trouble in the world especially the last few years. So the Jew is beaten. He's not happy. He's crushed. And because the Jew is crushed, then that means that his request comes from the very essence of his heart. When the person is crushed, the, 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 the request, mimamakim, from the depth, comes from the depth of his house. So that so that the, the the explanation in the postuk is causes the fact that we are beaten lamoya is going to reach our very essence. That's why it doesn't say causes lehoil. Lehoil means to light. Lamoya means to reach the essence of light, the very essence of the Jew. Because the Jew is beaten, because of that, that is going to reach this very essence and is going to ask Almighty God from his position of being crushed, where it reaches his very essence, and because of that, he's going to reach Lamoya, the very essence of Almighty God. And, and the Rebbe explains, the Jews are beaten and crushed because they are in Golos. And then the Rebbe says, Gam k'shiyesh lahem halachov begashmiyas uvluchnius even when they enjoy prosperity. In our generation, we see both. 
In our generation, we see the prosperity that a Jew enjoys. In the olden generation, a Jew did not have enough. Every Shabbos was a struggle. To get wine for Kiddush was a struggle. To get challah on the table was a struggle. To get a piece of gefilte fish was a struggle. Everything was a struggle. And you never knew what kind of new decrees the poets has waiting for us. Baruch Hashem, we live in the United States of America, or Canada, or Europe, or Israel, and there is no Mercedes Nefesh like in 1927 to send our kids to school. We give our, our kids the finest schools, the finest conditions, the finest teachers. Our children should only want to learn as much as we give them. In 1927, you had to send your child to Shkole. And the Fidelik Rebbe says that. And you shouldn't do it even in Mesidus Nefesh. Don't send your child to Shkole, even if that means whatever they're going to do to you. Baruch Hashem, you don't have to go to Mesidus Nefesh to send your children. You don't have to send them to Shkole. You can send them to a yeshiva, to a beslifke, to a besyankev, whatever you want. There are enough schools for our children. They should only want to learn. There's no Mitzvah's Nefesh for that. And there's no Mitzvah's Nefesh for the Jew to observe Shabbos. It was the olden days where a Jew was told, was told if you don't come on Sabbath, don't come in on Monday. Baruch Hashem, Jews have prosperity. Here it says, uh, It doesn't even say relative pros- prosperity. They have prosperity. Begashmiz or Baruchniz. Begashmiz, Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, they all, we, we all make a living as the expression goes. And 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 Hashem, we have schools. In the olden days, was a mesilas nefesh. A suke was a mesilas nefesh. The old story: a Jew sits a suke le'akleine mit bedet mit bedet alach yemene. And my father used to say the bishop golden used to cry. Oh, and gemacht a suke from a from a few boards with a little bit of schach, and he's afraid every moment. Who knows what's going to happen? Baruch Hashem, Jews, Jews can make sukkahs. You go on, on any street and you find uh, a sukkah in every house, outside. And you don't have to be afraid. Not only that, the police is going to protect you. The government is going to protect you. You want to put up a menela? You could put up a menela outside. My father used to say that he, there was a term, uh, the Fusniks, late, later on. Oh, uh, they came back from Russia, refused Nikis. My father used to stay by Stalin, and there were no refused Nikis. Nobody refused Stalin anything. The moment you were a refused Nik, the moment one refused, he was gone. He was a number. There were no refused Nikis by Stalin. And and to put up a manela in, in, in a public place like all Shluchim do was unheard of. I mean, a straight ticket, a straight ticket to jail. A one-way ticket to jail. Baruch Hashem, there is prosperity all over. The Rebbe has this year more than 15,000 public menelis. So there's prosperity. Prosperity on sending the children to school. Prosperity on eating kosher. Prosperity on keeping Shabbos. Prosperity prosperity on making a living. So the Rebbe says, but nevertheless, we're in Golos. Nevertheless, we get all the difficult news from Eretz Yisrael. And pressure from this side, pressure from that side. Why is that? Because it, the, what a Jew really wants, he should be in Eretz soil. He should have real freedom. In Golas, he doesn't have real freedom. He still needs to see what the authorities are going to give and what they're not going to give. So therefore, he wants real freedom, like in the days of, 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 of the Beis Amikdash. Let's learn it inside. And, and and moreover, the fact that Bisman Agolus ain't made Gilui Alekus Kemishoya Bisman Abayis, and especially that in the time of Golus, there is no great revelation of godliness as it was in the time of the Beis Amigdos. And then the Rebbe says, "Of Befrat, Kshem is being in possession of Melazal. If he is paying attention to the fact what our sages say, the Rebbe says that Sayyid Shalmi in Yume that call me shall in even the Beis Amigdos be Yom of Kila Nechla be Yom of whoever the Beis Amigdos was not built in his days is 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 as if it." was destroyed in his days. So in his days, he thinks the Beis Amikdash was destroyed. I remember the Rebbe saying it in the Sikha. 
It's punct with the Beis Hamidosh Cholov Gevodon, and he's witnessing the destruction of the Beis Hamidosh. How can he be happy? So therefore he is cosies, therefore he is beaten, therefore he is crushed, says the Rebbe. And, uh, and, and therefore who nishbal v'nitke cosies, he is, he, is, he is broken and he is beaten uh, and, 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 and crushed. So what's going to come out? Through the fact that he is beaten, we get to the very essence of the light, Almighty God, because this is the very, very uh, 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 will of each and every Jew, that to be closer to God. So Kosis means as he is beaten in Golos. Lamoyel means that hits and that reaches his the core of his of his existence and from the core of his existence he connects to the core of god's existence and therefore and therefore there's light but but kosis means beaten lamoil it reaches the very essence of light that is the pshat in in posuk and that is the answer to the third question now you're going to ask well, what about the fourth question in the fourth question, let's say it. Let's say it again. Insight. In the fourth question, fourth question is the first kasha is that in the posuk after that it says laha alisne it says me edavad bekel that the menorah should burn from night to morning, which means the menorah was was being lighted at night and then it burned the whole night. But here it says laha alisne tomit. Tomit means steady, all the time, eternal, everlasting. How do we reconcile that? And the answer is that through the fact that a Jew is going to be beaten, so therefore he's going to want the coming of the Besamigdosh. And the coming of the Besamigdosh, the third of Besamigdosh, is going to produce that there's going to be a Nochamol Amenele in Besamigdosh again. And that Menele will be forever. And that Besamigdosh will be forever. It's not going to be like the first Besamigdosh that lasted 410 years. Or the second Besamigdosh that lasted 420 years, but there's going to be an eternal base amidos. So therefore, Allah is nil tomit. We will reach the nil tomit, an everlasting light in the base amidos coming our way. So this is the kuntas that the Rebbe gave us. This is our passport. This Rebbe is our passport for the few moments, albeit too long, that we're in Golos and we don't see the Rebbe yet. But the passport is that we should know that we are getting there. That through the fact that there is causes that we are not happy with this condition, we are going to reach the more the very essence. And we will reach the essence of Almighty God, and that will produce the Beis Amikdash Ashlishi. And the Beis Amikdash Ashlishi will be Lahalis Nil Tomid, an everlasting edifice producing everlasting light. And prosperity and bliss, lonul holy soil, gesunte heit und freilich heit. Ob a golo di dan, ob a simcho, ob tuv livov, ob a teiv an ila ve aniglo, le matome asolat fochim, ob a chesed, ob a lachamim, ve teikef, umiyad, mamesh.